All right, so let's <laughs> shift to Jordan Peterson a little bit because okay. you are a student at the University of Toronto. <laughs> That's where he's been teaching for many years. This whole kerfuffle <laughs> over transgender pronouns. It's all, all his fault that he the school started. is so, like, everyone's yelling at each other and hates each other. I blame him. <laughs> what is, what's the atmosphere like at the school, actually? He's not teaching there right now because no, obviously yeah. he's on tour and the book and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But ha has the atmosphere changed? And do you think it's directly related to some of the stuff that he unearthed? I think it has changed because there you can see the groups. And when someone, you know, has a slightly right wing, or it's funny because uh, the fact that they associate individualism and the fact that they, they associate thinking for yourself with being right wing, it's like, why would you want to do that? It should not be, anyways. Why wouldn't you want to be <laughs> yeah. right wing? I exactly, would say at that exactly. Point. Yeah. Like, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so the, the when you're a little bit more right wing, I guess, they tend to say that, you know, you are a Jordan Peterson fan and you hate transgenders and blah, blah, blah. Like, there's a clear divide. You can tell which side people are on. Um, but I, yeah, I think it was bound to happen regardless. And just again, because of the Trump presidency, so, like, can we just blame Trump for everything here? <laughs> yes, you're in America now. Yeah. That's, that's what <laughs> that's you're what legally bound to We're do. We're in I'm California sure. too, so that's how. Yeah. Everything. Oh yeah, watch out. Um, so you sort of view it as kind of a necessary evil that mm -hmm. he sort of got this stuff. I mean, again, it goes to what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Like some of these people get these issues out there, mm -hmm. and then hopefully some goodness comes yeah. after them. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think the other thing is Trump allowed people, like I said earlier, to think for themselves in the sense to understand that maybe not everything is how it seems. Maybe things that I'm learning is not exactly how it is. And, you know, I, you know, I may disagree with his politics like, because I'm a liberal in general. Um, but I do think that, yeah, it was bound to happen. And Trump kind of shook things up and allowed a lot more people are engaging in politics now, which is so exciting and also really scary at the same time. Well, isn't that <laughs> it? I mean, that's it right there. I, I think just this morning I tweeted something out to that effect. It's like, mm -hmm. wow. It's incredibly exciting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean things are going to be good. I actually, uh, I believe things actually are going to get better because mm -hmm. there's so many cool new young people like yourself out there putting out ideas. Mm -hmm. Like I have hope, but yeah, it doesn't mean that that's how it's going to go. It might, yeah. it might go the other way. Yeah. And, but then the other thing is that because. Um, the far left are scared that people are starting to, you know, do more research. People are starting to Google things nowadays. <laughs> um, they've started to. So that's why they want to control Google. Exactly. Ex so now, <laughs> so that you can't find any right information. You can only find theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now they're changing definitions of things. So I mean, the definition of racism is no longer individual. It has to do with power plus privilege. So in other words, only white people can be racist towards minorities. Minorities cannot be racist towards white people. Um, they've also taken hold of the like student unions. And Jordan Peterson has talked about this a lot. Um, so sorry, what was the question? Well, my ranting? question <laughs> generally was uh, about Jordan and being a student at mm -hmm. University of Toronto and all that. So just keep yeah. going. Oh, You're no. on it. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, I, I just feel like. Um, the student unions are just influencing a lot of the students, and they're influencing a lot of the events that are happening. They they claim to speak on behalf of all students, so and they claim that they're fighting against racism, except they define it a different way. I mean, who's going to go against someone that says they're fighting against racism and sexism and every other buzzword that they can throw out there? You have to accept it. Mm -hmm. um, and because they've changed the definition of racism, they've started to have events. And there was a white privilege conference, which I actually did a video on. Yeah, yeah I wanted at to Ryers, get to that. <laughs> at Ryers University. Yeah. So that's the way that they're countering it. They're countering the facts with just you know al alternative facts <laughs> with their own uh, BS feminist studies ideas. I don't even know, but that's I guess the way they're doing it. They're trying to influence students from schools so then when they get out they can become more liberal. So the things that Jordan talks about when he talks about the individual mm -hmm. and when he talks about why the government shouldn't be able to talk, tell you what pronouns to use etc cetera, etc cetera, you see these things as all directly related to everything else that you've been talking about here. Yeah no for sure and I think it's also about um, Sorry, I just blanked. <laughs> well, so we were at a Jordan event. That's, yeah. where, that's where we met about yes. a month ago in yeah. Toronto and was it a white supremacist, oh, yeah. evil incel male? I, I was stoned on my oh. way out. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, but were you surprised at all when you saw what type like of Krell? people and, a, and an interesting, diverse, young, mm. I think most of them, I've been telling people, it's about 60, 40 yeah. male uh, to female, but mm. sometimes it's even closer to 50, 50. Yeah, no, I, I think it's pretty uh, diverse. And I've gone to several events, like uh, 
political events, I guess, where I look in the crowd and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of minorities here. There's women here. There's men here. There's everyone here. And sorry, where I where I blanked was uh, the idea that you can't you can't debate something. That's where that was the whole Peter. I'm like ranting here. Sorry, no, the whole Peterson thing now. gets me like all excited because I was there. It was so yeah. fun. Um, <laughs> he has the, this effect on people. Yeah. But the fact that you can't debate certain topics, the fact that you can't debate whether or not we should use certain pronouns, because they say, well, you're questioning my identity. You're questioning me as a person, my humanity. They turn it around and make it sound like you hate that person. And that's the thing is, it's not like I agree with Peterson or I agree with the, you know, the students. I just want to hear both sides. That's all I'm asking for. So then we can all make an informed, you know, conclusion. But they don't want you to hear both sides. They want you to hear their side. And that is the only side. You see what happened with like Lindsay Shepard as well, where she, you know, played a Peterson debate where they're all sides. And they don't want you to hear that. They only want you to hear their side. And that's where, that's one thing I hate the most, just the lack of discussion. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought up Lindsay because that also is happening in Canada. That mm. one's at Wilfrid Laurier University. Now there's a lawsuit that she's involved oh, yeah. in, and I suspect, I read some of the initial brief, I mean, I think this thing's gonna be a, a bloodbath for the <laughs> university. Um, but what does that say is happening in Canada in a larger way? I think you've kind of hit on this a little bit. Like, you guys are almost having like this like Trump hangover or mm -hmm. something, where, or even the Black Lives Matter thing. Like, it didn't start in America. As you said, race relations were different mm -hmm. in Canada. I would argue they're still great here. It no, they're great here. Yeah, right, yeah I mean, for sure. Can Canadians are just nicer, okay? Right, general. Canadians just generally, <laughs> you guys, you know, we've done two shows in Toronto, mm -hmm. and the shows were totally nice and pleasant, <laughs> but like, we've gone to some other cities where, and I find it's usually in the progressive cities. Mm. So it's been in, you know, San Francisco mm. and it's been in Seattle and a couple of the others where the crowds are the craziest yeah. and most raucous, which is what I like the most because they kind of, they need his message. Yeah. Toronto, you guys are very pleasant. <laughs> You're very pleasant. I think we, we're going to, we're getting to a point where we need his message. I think it, it's, it's getting a little scary, especially with uh, Trudeau as our prime minister. He's kind of kowtowing to a lot of the social justice warrior. And um, the fact that he's even, you know, talking to Black Lives Matter Toronto, who, you know, the leader, one of the leaders said she wants to kill white men. She tweeted that. She wished she can kill all white men. And the other one actually stole $300,000 from my student union, stole it, and said the she, on her last day, she filed her overtime, and she filed thousands of hours of overtime, Jeez. and said she this She filed $300,000 300, $300, Yes, worth it's a of third overtime? of our entire budget, of our student union's budget, a third. And here's the best part of it. She files that. Obviously, there, there's there's alerts that go off. You can't take that much money for, what are you, your student union president? $300,000? Pretty sure there aren't that many hours in the yeah. day. But here's the thing. She claims that the majority of those hours come from work that she does for the black community, for like Black Lives Matter. That doesn't count. No one is asking you. That's not affiliated with the school. No one's asking you. Whatever you do at home has nothing to do with that. Anyways, the school obviously said they wanted the money back. They tried to sue her, and they started a whole campaign saying my university is anti-black. And then they started to put posters up. They got gathered a bunch of people saying that they're, they're only suing her because she's black. You stole three hundred thousand. You took three hundred thousand dollars, girl. Like, are you because you're black? Are you kidding me? Does that not even? Anyway, she, you know, they vandalized the student union. They have like megaphones, start to yelling, saying anti-black racism happens here. Hence, and it was just this whole ordeal. Like, it's oh gosh. Anyways, <laughs> what have you found the best arguments to get people your age to wake up to some of this stuff? Like, I know obviously they're watching your videos. So yeah. that's like probably your your prime way of doing it. But mm. have you found simple? arguments, simple phrases, mm -hmm. or whatever that you can use to get some people out of this? Uh, <laughs> everything can be explained away through a socioeconomic uh, standpoint. You, uh, the, a lot of the issues that the black community face is because they're poor, which is the same issues that poor white communities face as well. And um, I, I, you know, there are examples of black Americans and black Canadians that do do well, do do well. And uh, you have to look at why they're doing well. Okay, so they have higher education. You know, there's, they're, both parents are at home. There are all these different factors to look at. And it's like, oh, so it's not just the color of my skin. It's either choices are, I make or the area I'm in, the surroundings I'm in, or the school I went to, rather than just it's the color of my skin. Um, but I think you just have to break it down to that before for a lot of people can understand where, where I'm coming from and why I think a certain way. Um, it's just, it's easy to just to say, well, it's because I'm black and I'm not doing as well. It's, no, there's, there's so many different ways to explain it. How do you rub off all the, the stuff that they must say about you? Because I, I have enough friends <laughs> that are black conservatives or, or are kind of liberal yeah. or whatever you want to call it. The, the things that I see get 
that gets said about them all the time. Every time Larry Elder comes and does my show and I look on Twitter, the mm -hmm. things that the things that's the supposed tolerant people, right? Yeah. The progressives, the lefties, that they say about this man who I know is being authentic. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, it's ridiculous. I mean, I get a lot of uh, hate comments where, it's, you know, they'll call me coon, they say I hate myself, I want to be white, all these different things. I, it's The one part is like me speaking this way or speaking, I guess, I don't want to say proper English per se, but it, I'm trying to be white, I'm trying to be something I, I'm not. And it's like, why are you fitting people a race in a group? You're just allowing white people just to say, well, black people are just dumb. Because if you say we all act the same way and we should all think the same way, that means you can, every black person can be explained with one statement. That's not fair. Let us all be individuals. In fact, you should be fighting for us to be individuals and have our own ideas. Why are we trying to form groups? And then, you know, they wonder why, why there's all these like white supremacist groups forming up. Because you've already, it's a sides thing. You said there's our side and there's your side. So we're like, okay, sure, we'll form a group, I guess, and go against you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, a lot of the hate comments are just useless. I ignore the epithets, but I do try to understand a lot of the criticism. And again, it's just not understanding where I'm coming from. It's not, you know, getting their stats from the right place. The root.com or onion is not somewhere to get your facts from. <laughs> um, but I like that you compared those. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty funny. But when I, um, you know, get into a detailed discussion with a lot of them, then they understand where I'm coming from. And it's like, there's this light that kind of shines. And I do that in my school a lot as well, where someone that absolutely hates me, I'll spend a whole day talking to them. And at the end, I call it like, it's really awful to use this conversion therapy, which is <laughs> awful to say that. Um, well, but, you're not electrocuting them, No. Okay, okay. <laughs> but by the end of it, it's like their minds are blown because they just believed everything Black Lives Matter said, everything the mainstream left media have said. So it's, I think it's just, you just gotta talk to them. They don't wanna talk. They're stuck in an echo chamber. Yeah, do you see this intersection and this combining of perceived depressions, something that will just sort of crap out under its own weight. So like, for example, if you're gonna keep saying, well, black people should, or this minority, whatever that minority is, should get easier entrance to this or access to this or whatever, what you're actually saying is, well, other people are going to have to be punished based mm -hmm. on their immutable characteristics. We see this now, I mean, I see a massive split happening mm -hmm. with the Asian community right mm -hmm. now in America because by every metric that we, judge success, they're mm. succeeding at extremely high levels because yep. of hard work and education and commitment to family. But if you're gonna start saying, well, we're gonna have to take less of them mm. because we have to take more of other people, you're actually setting these groups to hate each other. Yeah. That is so dangerous. Exactly, and you're telling one group that they can't do it on their own. And um, there are some studies, I, I forgot who was, with, was who wrote it, but it was called the mismatch theory, which is um, a lot of the stu minority students that are getting thrown in universities or they're not qualified actually turn out worse. When they come out, they don't get jobs because they don't have the actual skills that they needed to get in. But yeah, it creates this kind of tension. Why would you tell someone that you know they're more important just because of the color of your skin? It's gonna piss other people off. Um, it's, I don't think that's a way to move forward. I don't think that's a way to progress, but yeah. And the whole intersectionality thing, it's, it's ridiculous. The Pride Parade, I guess, in Toronto is an example of that. It's like, my issues are more important. And then obviously the LGBTQ community, they all hated that. And they were all very upset with it because it's like, Pride is one of the most inclusive, you know, events in, in the in the city like, why are you trying to ruin it and say this is a black thing it's an everybody thing we're, we're all advocating for everyone here so it's it's it, they're just going to yeah they're going to ruin themselves if they keep just batting each yeah. other speaking of that I saw the thing that you did you were not happy when they put the black and brown oh uh, yeah stripes <laughs> into the rainbow flag which I also thought was completely ridiculous <laughs> the whole point is that this is for everybody we're mm -hmm. not looking at all your differences and yep. all your races yeah but that's one thing it's like we're Reverse segregation. I really don't yeah. get it. The white privilege conference at Ryerson University, yeah. that's reverse segregation. And I actually gave them the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, I'm going to ignore the name. I'm going to actually try to see what they're trying to teach. And ultimately, the end, the conclusion of this event was listen to people listen to what people are saying. So anecdotes, only listen to people's, <laughs> their feelings. Yeah. So it's like, that's not how you form a society. It's a, the majority were white women that were just sitting there hearing black people tell them, just listen to our stories because we know and we experience it. And you know, you, we have to have, you know, black spaces. In fact, there's someone that tweeted during the event saying, um, a woman just rose her hand to speak while white splaining, wait for, the, for later where we have our white corner so yeah. we can talk about, you know, yeah. our, what is this? What kind of society are we preparing ourselves for? It's literally reverse segregation or segregation in the true sense of the word. And I, yeah, I really don't get it. What, what do you make of the 
guilty white allies.、Mm-hmm. Those people, you know, when I've had,、uh, I know you met Brett Weinstein、yeah. from Evergreen and、yeah. and Heather, his wife.、Um, one of the things that fascinated me most when he was going through the ordeal there was that he said he never feared. The black students、mm-hmm. physically, or the brown students, or whatever.、Mm-hmm. It was the it was the white allies. He said that had this sort of look in their eye, like they were the ones that could get violent.、Mm-hmm. And I've seen that that look. What do you make of that they, sort of ginned up <laughs> hatred? Because it's hard to to. Because if, if you're not black, then I mean they try to explain it. If you're not black, then you don't experience it. Then you don't understand it. So as a white ally, you have to just take everything、uh, you know an activist says to you as fact, as this is what is happening.、Um, one of the the speakers actually, he did an interview for the Toronto Star, and they asked him, and I was like, okay, what? Where do you see white privilege in Toronto? And he said, literally, I, I mean I'm paraphrasing、Uh-oh. here, but he said, when you walk into a store. Black people, or black people, have to think about the fact that people are watching them. Okay, sure. I was like, fine, whatever. But apparently, black people have to pay for items in one section before they can move to another section, so they don't get accused of stealing. That's his. His. He got a chance to tell us what white privilege is, and that was his example of white privilege. Is、it's, that happening in no, Canada? No, never. I, I, it's never happened. I've worked retail for like the <laughs> most of my life. What, you're gonna like pay in the kids <laughs> section before you go to the men's section? Like, what world is this guy living in? I, it blew my mind. And another one, you know, did an article where it's how the outdoors is racist and how you know people feel like the you know skiing and hiking and everything is a white space and therefore black people don't want to go to it. And it's like who you're saying it? You are the one that are making these claims. Why are we? It's just more division. It's more like it just it pisses me off. Yeah, you wh- know what?、We're, because you're visiting LA for a couple、yeah. <laughs> days. I don't have a ton of time, but maybe we could go on a quick hike and see what happens.、Uh, a white I know. guy it, and a black <laughs> woman go on a hike. Yeah, exactly. But it just like you obviously don't care about the betterment of the black community because you wouldn't be talking about these non-issues here in the states. You can talk about you know,、uh, sorry, how the education system works. You can talk about the war on drugs. You can talk about the prison system. But yet, the the m- amount of people they got to protest the Trayvon Martin you know、uh, shooting. If you can get that many people to protest the war on drugs, you can probably make a change. But no, they're going to focus on you know. I, I think. Police shootings is one of the least things that are actually affecting Black Americans, but yet that's what they want to put their focus on.、It、so, how much of the root of that is just lazy thinking? Like, it's easy to get people ginned up about a shooting per se,、mm-hmm. and I'm not, I'm not diminishing yeah, the ones、sure. that are wrong. For obviously. sure, obviously, it's all but, but it's, clear. But it's easier to take all of the anecdotal stuff. The,、mm-hmm. the woman at the shopping center who this happened to, or that. Yeah. It's always easier to do that than to really be like, let's really look at the prison systems, which I would be for looking. Yeah, I would be figuring、Certainly. out ways that we can ma- do better education、mm-hmm. to minority communities、yeah. that have been neglected. All of those things, but those things aren't really sexy. They're not like the、mm-hmm. things that get people out on the streets、yeah. for more than a day. It's the other stuff.、Mm-hmm. So part of this is just human nature, right? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I. I can base all my arguments on anecdotes, but that doesn't like that means nothing to me. I can just say, oh well, this one day I've lived in Toronto all my life and I've never experienced racism. I'm not going to use that as fact, but yeah, but it's so much easier to do so. It's so much easier to you know play with the heartstrings and say like this is what's really happening. But it's just it's just sad that there are actual policies that you know can be changed or put in place that could actually uplift the black community. But you know, none of the people that are that claim to be the activists care, and especially the celebrities, which really annoys me. Beyonce and Jay Z, all they do is talk about you know black rights and blah blah. blah. Why don't you use your billion dollars to you know create some rehabilitation center for people that are getting out of prison? Why don't you try to fight for the war on drugs? Like it's all these things where it's it's yeah, it's it's easy just to say, oh look, there's a shooting. You know, this is what black people experience every day, and you know white people are racist. The end. No, it's there's I don't know. It's easier for them to just to say, look at this. This anecdote and this shooting, and that's what's affecting us. But there's so many other things that could be done. Yeah, I think、done. you saw a little bit of my appearance at University of New Hampshire when those kids were、oh, yeah. yelling at、mm-hmm. me, and when that one woman, who I don't think was a student, I think、mm-hmm. she was a, either a mother of a student or, or an advisor or something, when she kept saying, you know, these kids pointing to the black kids could get shot when they walked、mm-hmm. out of here. She's talking about at University of New Hampshire.、Mm-hmm. And it's like I, I actually that was one of the only moments where I didn't know what to say because it's it was so crazy to say that like、mm-hmm. you're not going to be shot、yeah. when you walk out of here yeah and I think I maybe said something to that effect but like <laughs> it's like that's really dangerous that、yeah. line of thinking I I totally agree and I was actually having a 
I went to a comedy club the other day and there's this guy on stage. He was like typical uh, inner city black youth or whatever. And uh, he, after his set, he came to sit at my table. Everyone was gone. And he made a comment saying, um, wow, it was really hard to be a black woman in, in this country. And this is, again, this is Canada. I feel like there's no excuses for Canada. Like, get <laughs> out of here. Um, and I asked him, okay, how? And he's just like, I don't know. It's just, it's really hard to be, you know, a woman in black. I'm like, yeah, I get the whole woman thing because, you know, men are, you know, physically bigger and blah, blah, blah. Um, but why is it hard for me to be black in, in Toronto specifically? And he's like, you know, because, you know, there's just white privilege. I'm like, no, no, no. Give me two reasons. Give me two <laughs> concrete reasons. Could not come up with one. Because there is, you you can't come up with one. You have to use the anecdotes. You have to use the, you know, if you walk out the street, you're going to get shot. Why? What are the statistics of people that get shot by police? Oh, seven get shot by police per year and it's not recorded by race and it also doesn't tell us if they're armed or unarmed. Seven people. And you're telling me you're more likely to walk out the door as a black person and get shot? That's not an epidemic. You know what's an epidemic? The crime in black communities. That's an epidemic. But you want to ignore that and just talk about the other, yeah, anecdotes that pull at the heartstrings and make people feel guilty and... Oh, it's so, it's a waste of time. It's such a waste of time. But, what, do, what do your parents think about what you're doing? Uh, well, they are conservative, so they love it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what makes you not conservative? If, some, if someone was to say, you're, you're conservative, I watch your videos, yeah. you talk about conservatism's not that bad, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Why would you not say you're sort of putting aside the, the exhaustion of labels for a second? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I would say I'm fiscally conservative. So I guess I do believe in like lower taxes in some sense. Um, I do believe in the free market. I do believe in, you know, less regulations, all that fun stuff. But at the same time, I do think that there should be some sort of social safety net. And, uh, you know, living in Canada where there is, you know, um, sorry, uh, free health, not free health care, universal health care and, you know, f universal education. The education system is amazing. The, the funding for the education system is amazing. Um, so it's stuff like that where I think I'm a little bit more liberal, where I do think the government should help in some way. But it's because I'm used to it. It's what I grew up with and I haven't really seen anything different. And it works works fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I guess that, and I'm pro-choice. Um, so it's stuff like that where I really do stand firm in my liberal views and ideas. And then, yeah, I'm fiscally conservative. Yeah. Wow. We're pretty much aligned. We're pretty much Whoa. on the level. I finally found somebody. Now we can go out hiking yes. and we can start beating people. Exactly. Or, I don't know what we're supposed to do. Once you find an ally, then yeah. you start attacking other people, I think, right? That, that's how it works. Something like that. Where do you want to go with all this? I've seen, I've seen your channel grow. I think obviously, you know, having you here, it'll, it'll help boost your profile a little bit. You're going to go into politics. What are you going to do? Prime Minister of Canada? Ooh, uh, Take out that Trudeau guy with his fancy socks. What do you Trudeau. think? Trudeau. Oh, gosh. Um, or well, maybe, maybe Peterson will do it, but you could probably be in his cabinet. Yeah, definitely. Sorry. Well, I, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now, and I'm quite surprised that people even enjoy watching my videos. It's <laughs> like it's cool to do something you love, and people like it as well. Like I, I really am having fun doing it, and I think I would probably go into politics later in life. I mean, I am doing political science; it has to be useful somewhere. I've been toying around with law, but again, I'm not sure if I really want to be in you know the whole. I don't know if I want to deal with law school, um, but. And I'm starting actually a podcast with my boyfriend, which I would be uploading very soon. But nice. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, By the way, we should tell people because yeah. they'll find out otherwise your boyfriend is white. Yes, my boyfriend is white. Which means you could have potentially children who look black. Yeah. They might look white. They mm -hmm. could look a little bit of both. <laughs> You've talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter to you. No, <laughs> of course not. No, uh, yeah, my boyfriend being white has been used as like an attack against me, saying like, "Wow, look at you! Uh, what does they say? Sleeping with the devil or something like that?" And it's just it's he like, seems like a decent fella. He's, he's I think a great we were guy. Maybe play Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's a great guy. But again, it's it's the whole idea of why are you creating more div uh, divisiveness and then saying you want equality? Why are you saying a black woman being with a white man is bad and then say, "Wow, white people are mean." to me like can, you either want equality or you don't you either want individuality or you don't pick one you can't have both you can't anyway sorry but yeah um yeah i'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure where exactly i will be in the next five years i'm having fun with what i'm doing now i work for the national post which i absolutely love um and then i have the podcast coming so that's what i'm going to do for now and maybe I might get into politics, but oh, it's so messy. I'm the like, fact that you even are going that far right now, yeah. you're doing it. Oh God, yeah. I hate to tell you, I can see it now. But how exciting, I'll have somebody to support. And you know yeah. what, you get 
You do something in Canada okay. where you run and you become something, mayor or something, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do. I will consider mm. moving oh my. to Canada. Really? Oh my God. I will, if, you, if you can pull it off, yeah. it'll be a big freaking test. Oh, we'll yeah. see what happens. Definitely. Think uh, I do, you think I do okay there, a white guy? Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're, d you're done. You're done for. <laughs> you're going to have to start giving me like half of your pay just because, you know, racism and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, but I think one thing that I would actually probably like to do, which I probably will not be able to, but uh, to do a lot of work in like inner city communities, because I've, I, I don't want to say I've lived through it, but I understand what's going on there. I understand that, you know, there's a high crime. I understand that in some neighborhoods, the schools aren't as good. For Canada, it's a little different, but I'd like to do some work there where I can kind of tell them, hey, I got out and here's what I did to get out and you can do it too. There's so many, there's opportunities there for you. Like if you were a poor minority, you know, child right now, please just try your hardest at school get an education it's literally one of the greatest opportunities that you can have and you're more likely i mean you're probably not a hundred percent great but you're more likely to be successful if you get an education and that's the one thing a lot of black you know uh, people are lacking is the education components and um you know we don't really have like the war on drugs and everything so it really is weird for me that in si inner cities of toronto where there's still this very high crime there's still this tension um, but, you know, have you ever heard of the Woodson Center by any chance? No, I don't it's think so. It's a nonprofit organization. It's located in D.C., um, but I've been working with them for some time, and they basically do the same thing. They go out to these neighborhoods, and they help students, and they have such a good success rate. They help them in high school, because that's the other thing, is that a lot of black kids are not even graduating high school. Of course they're going to go into crime if you're not even graduating high school. Um, so, yeah, they work with a lot of students there. They, you know, have rehabilitation centers. They help, you know, uh, black sorry, black Americans reintegrate into society. Like it's stuff like that where it's these grassroots movements that I would really like to do. And I know it's a, it's a big dream, but I think that's where I'll probably be happiest is where I can show people how it's done and help them. And hopefully everyone can copy that and say, oh, this is what we're supposed to do and all that, but. Awesome, I love <laughs> it and I have no doubt that you're gonna do it. And you guys can follow this future member of Canadian Parliament <laughs> on her YouTube channel right here. It's youtube.com slash my name is Josephine.